Well, welcome to our family service this week on Sunday the 19th of July. I'm going to take a bit of a leap of faith here, aided by the weather forecast, and say that the sun is shining, God is on his throne, and we're here to praise him and offer our worship to God today. So wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, I hope that this finds you well. As always, we're going to do lots of things together in our service. We're going to sing. We're going to hear the word of God through the Bible. And Rhiannon's going to help us reflect upon what that word might mean for us. And we're going to be praying, of course, which is where we're going to start. So why don't we put our hands together and offer an opening prayer to God as we offer ourselves uh, and this time to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that you are God, that you are on your throne, that you are in control. We thank you for your great love for us. And we offer ourselves at your feet in humble and adoring worship, asking that you will speak to us through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the psalmist in the Old Testament urges us to make a new song to the Lord. So we're going to do just that as we sing our first song. Well, our Bible passage this week comes once again from Matthew's Gospel, and after it, Rhiannon will be helping us to explore what it might be meaning for us in our life. So to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 13, 24 to 30, 36 to 43. The parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. 
the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seeds in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. The parable of the weeds explained. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out all of his kingdom, everything that causes sin and who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Hello. Today in our Bible story, we've heard about the parable of the weeds. I'm sure I'm not alone. I've got weeds growing in my garden. I made sure when I planted out my garden at the start of lockdown, I did it in good soil and didn't have any weeds, yet still they grow. And as you probably know, weeds are not great for the garden. They rob the soil of nutrients and they choke out the good plants. So what can you do? You could take a hoe and chop down the weeds. But if you do that, you might chop down some of the good plants by accident. Or another way is to buy some weed killer but the weed killer doesn't know which plants I want to keep and which ones I want to kill. It kills everything that it touches. You know, sometimes it's best just to leave the weeds alone until it's harvest time, and then you can separate the weeds from the good plants. And Jesus told us that story that compared his church to a garden that was infested with weeds. Sometimes there are people in church that don't really belong, that they do things that aren't loving or don't seem to believe what the Bible teaches. They sometimes say hurtful things about other members of church to try to hurt them. And they're like weeds in a garden. We have to be really careful about trying to remove these people from church. In his story, Jesus said that we shouldn't worry about pulling up the weeds that grow around us. And if we do, we do more harm than good. He suggests that we leave the weeds to, for God to take care of and concentrate on doing what he wants us to do, which is producing the good fruit. So whenever you see someone in church that you don't think should be there, before you grab your hoe or your weed killer, remember the advice of Jesus. Just leave it up to God to separate the weeds from the good plants. If we try to take matters into our own hands, we'll probably do more harm than good. Now normally I help with Messy Church and in Messy Church we do activities as well as a celebration time. And one of the activities we would do for a story like this is to recreate our picture of us becoming fruit in our church. So I thought it'd be quite nice if we could do the same together today. If you could draw out a picture of you as fruit and the fruit that we're becoming, good fruit that we're becoming of church, I'm going to share a couple that we've already had in and if you could share some on Facebook that'd be really lovely too. And so as Rhiannon's invited us to do so, why not let's take some time now drawing our own pictures, uh, our own fruity pictures 
perhaps of our churches um, and ourselves if we want to. Uh, my friend, uh, the big G here, um, has overcome his uh, fear of ghosts by drawing his own fruity picture. Uh, it's fruity pictures, I can see an orange, um, a pear, some grapes, a banana and an apple and some strawberries amongst um, other things. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, and then, of course, um, we've got another picture here of a, a rather large pineapple um, sort of dominating St. Leonard's Church, um, which is interesting, wearing sunglasses, of course. Um, so uh, just a couple of ideas. Um, you can, of course, make your own uh, pictures. Of course, don't forget that we have uh, two messy churches here, uh, firstly in Redditch and also in Church Hill. You can find us on Facebook, so do have a look if you haven't found us already. Um, and you can share your own pictures with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so do get in touch with us if you can. Um, and we'd love to be able to have a look at your own pictures. So perhaps we'll take a little bit of time now just to... Uh, reflect on what we've heard. We pray for all those who have been affected in any way by coronavirus and for NHS staff, carers and all key workers who continue to provide valuable services and support as we take the gradual steps back into normal life. We pray for all the scientists and medical staff across the world who are working hard to find a vaccine and treatment for the virus and pray that you give them the strength and support they need to find solutions. We remember that not everyone is yet willing or able to return to normal life and so, we put, and so we pray for those who are still shielding and who still need support and guidance from family, friends, neighbours and the wider community during this continued period of lockdown. We pray that you will continue to comfort and guide them through this difficult time. We pray for all the businesses in the community and are thankful for those who have been able to keep staff employed during this time. We bring before you those who are struggling financially and ask, ask that you take their worries and stresses away and give them the power and strength to find new opportunities and employment. We thank you for our local schools who have continued to provide care for key worker children this term alongside providing materials and support for homeschooling during this difficult time we pray that all school staff will have health have a healthy and restful break over the summer before all children return to school in september let's finish with the lord's prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
draw to the end of our service today it's time for the notices this week is very much steady as we go our churches remain open for private prayer Monday is St Philip's Tuesday St Stephen's uh, a present nowhere on Wednesday we're looking into opening Lower Bentley Thursday St Bart's and St Stephen's Friday, St Philip's, Saturday, St Lawrence's and St Stephen's. So please do check out the Holy Trinity Redditch website, holytrinityredditch.org.uk. There you'll be able to find the times we're open and remind yourselves of the days. We're also working towards having public services next month. Uh, this is more complex than you might imagine to just get into place. So at present, do please bear with us. Uh, there'll be more news appearing about this over the coming weeks as we seek uh, your opinion. And if you're from the wider community, let us know what you're thinking. Finally, please do continue to reflect and pray about your giving to the church. Um, we at St Stephen's were looking at this last week and we're definitely spending more than we have coming in. This is not a problem just now, but it will become a problem. So if you haven't done so already, please look at signing up for the parish giving scheme. Do think and pray about your personal giving and do talk to your treasurer or contact us by email or reach out to your minister um, if you'd like more information about what you can do about that. We will get back to you. In the meantime, Let's return to our service. Well, thank you to everyone who's made a contribution to the service this week. Not least, of course, Rhiannon for the words that she shared with us and our young people for the excellent prayers of intercession that they led us in. I hope that you have a fruitful week ahead as we live out our lives and let's finish with a final prayer as we go on our way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Help us to live lives which are fruitful, which build your kingdom wherever we are. Help us this week to be inspired by your Holy Spirit 
and to be faithful to the calling that you have for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay safe, go well and may God be with you.